We've talked about the victims in Duma. We've talked about the Assad regime and its patrons, Russia and Iran. We've spent a week talking about the unique horror of chemical weapons. The time for talk ended last night. We're here today because three permanent members of the United Nations Security Council acted. Now for some context, because obviously today several European leaders are voicing their support for the U.S.-led airstrikes against Syria, but they also warned against allowing the seven-year conflict to escalate at all. Blaise Mitzal is the director of national security at the Bipartisan Poly Center, Policy Center, and he joins us now with more. Blaise, it started in 2011, but boy, it's a lot more complicated than it was then. It certainly is. In fact, we often think of it here in the U.S. as multiple conflicts going on at once. There's the civil war opposition trying to topple Assad within Syria. There's the ISIS threat, which sort of popped up in 2014 and is now largely contained in Syria and Iraq. Uh, but there's also the role of Iran. There's the role of Russia. There's the Turks fighting the Kurds. Uh, and we often try to segregate those into nice little boxes right. and say, we're focused on ISIS. We're going to try to deter the use of chemical weapons. But we're not dealing with, this, with, this, with the broader conflict. But the U.S. got more involved in, you would say, around 2014. And that was mostly to target ISIS, but also to arm the rebels. Is that right? That's right. Following the rise of ISIS, which sort of just stormed across Syria and Iraq unexpectedly and then started capturing U.S. citizens, beheading some of them, uh, the U.S. in 2014 started gearing up uh, and at the same time had its own coalition but was also arming rebels on the ground uh, with the goal of both fighting ISIS and maybe also fighting the Assad regime. So then when did we start to see a real uptick in, in interest from Russia? And on what, what vacuum did they fill, and why is there such an interest? Yeah, so, so Russia really came in, in in 2015 and 2016 when it looked like Assad was wavering. The, the opposition uh, was, was gaining ground for, for a number of reasons. Some of it was support from, from the U.S. Uh, part of it was support from other countries, which, which was often support actually to extremist elements. It wasn't just ISIS. There was al-Nusra and al-Qaeda affiliate. There's other jihadist groups uh, that got money from Qatar and other, other mi Middle Eastern countries, uh, and they were very effective. Uh, and with Assad sort of on the ropes uh, and Iran not being able to do enough, Russia came in uh, and contributed its air power. Uh, and that's really when we saw the tide turn against the rebels. And if not mistaken, they have a fiscal interest. They have a port there that they wanted access to. And so have, they, have they gotten what they've wanted? Are, are they happy with yeah. what they want? So I think that's a, that's a big debate. What does Russia want in Syria? And we often talk about it. They, they have a port in Tartus that they want. They have an airfield in Latakia. Uh, maybe right. that's their main interest. Maybe they don't really care about the east of Syria or other parts of it. Uh, but I think it's broader than that. And really the conflict, all of it, in Syria, in Iraq, uh, in Yemen as well, is Iran and Russia focused on one thing trying to push the United States out of the Middle East to, to lower the U.S. standing on the world stage, uh, basically, to, to use President Trump's language, to make us look like losers and them look like winners. Uh, and when we lose sight of that broader objective that they're fighting for, I, I think we, 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 we lose sight of uh, what, what the U.S. interests are, uh, and, and we can actually sort of lose. Right, right. Well, Blaze, I, we could certainly pick your brain. We've had some breaking news, obviously, but we hope to have you back. You brought in Yemen, too. There's, there's a, a lot of things we could talk to you about. Thank you so much for joining us for that Excellent. context.